Good day, STAT students. So we're going to go over section 2.4, uh, part 2 today. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, apply the standard deviation now. So we have what's called the empirical rule. And what you'll find out is that the empirical rule has uh, three parts to it, but I'm going to break it down into each part. And I'm also, I'm not alone am I going to describe it with uh, words, I'm also going to use um, pictures to describe the situation. So like I said, this is the first application of the standard deviation, so we're going to use a standard deviation throughout the semester. So it's just the first application. Now the empirical rule only applies to bell-shaped data. Okay, So this does not um, uh, apply to skewed left or skewed right data, only bell-shaped. Like I said, it has three parts, and here's the first part. The first part says about 68% of, of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So, a couple of things here. I said about. So it's roughly 68%. It's not exactly 68%, but it's, it's roughly that. That's one. More important thing is that this says within one standard deviation. So what does it mean by within one? All right, what does it mean within one standard deviation? So does that mean less than? Does that mean greater than? Or does that mean either way? And so I think hopefully you said either way. It means both less than and, and greater than. So for instance, you had uh, some sort of number. You had 6. Okay, 5 is within one unit of 6. Well, so is what? 7. 7 is also within one unit of 6. And so we are talking, when we say within one standard deviation, that's the English way of saying it, eh, both less than and greater than. Okay, and notice that this is always versus the mean. All right. So uh, here's a problem here. Uh, an example, anyways. It says the heights of all U.S. male adults are bell-shaped, with the mean equaling 70 inches and a standard deviation of four inches. So what are we saying here? 70 inches. We're saying uh, five foot ten. Okay. I'm not exactly sure if 4 inches is, is right, but uh, um, that's that's a reasonable number anyways, okay? And so, I just went ahead and put that on the next slide here, okay? So what is that telling us? Is that if, it, first of all, let, let's get this one out of the way. Um, we are sort of in pretend land. And why are we in pretend land? Do you, do you think we are able to actually go ahead and... and uh, uh, measure the heights of all U.S. adult males? Of course not, okay? And that's why it's pretend land, is that we probably did do that, okay? But to do this problem, we're going to pretend that we did, okay? And we're going to pretend that we had all those x values, okay? And that we took the average of all those values and calculated a mean, okay? And calculated a standard deviation, all right? So we've already done that. Right? We just synthesized the data, and we're pretending that we had all the data already. Okay, So since we're talking about a population, because we said the word all here, uh, we're talking about a population mean then. So the heights of all uh, U.S. male adults are what? Are bell-shaped and has a mean. So what are we talking about? This must be mu. And since we're talking about a standard deviation that's coming from a population, we must be talking about sigma. Okay, so what we're saying is that mu is equal to 70 and standard deviation is equal to 4. And let's use the proper symbols here. If it came from a sample, we would have been using what? X bar and S instead. But, okay, this came from a population and let's use the proper symbols. So, <clears throat> U.S. adult male heights, right? And so it's nice and bell-shaped, okay? And uh, let's see here. We should probably go ahead and put uh, what right smack dab in the middle? We should probably put 70, because for, for every bell-shaped curve, where's the mean going to be located? The mean's going to be located, you know, on this axis down here, right smack dab in the middle, okay? And so 70 would go right here. All right, and notice I have this in terms of x, this axis. All right, 
What about how the standard deviation comes into play? Well, see, we had a standard deviation of 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to move a certain amount of units this way. How many units? 4. Why are we going to move 4? Because that was the standard deviation. So what I want you to think of is that uh, from this point here, the middle point, until the end of the curve, which is right about there, it, it doesn't actually end, but uh, it's basically where it's going to end. Uh, that think of uh, separating that distance from here to there into thirds, and that's a standard deviation in this situation. So this would represent one standard deviation out to 74. But remember, we have to do that also in the, the other way, less than. And so one standard deviation the other way. So remember, we had a standard deviation of 4, so we're starting with mu of 70. Subtracting 4, we get 66. So what it does is that it creates an interval. It creates an interval from here to here. All right. And so I went ahead and, and showed that with this particular... Uh, uh, I think this was with uh, StackCrunch. Uh, I had StackCrunch draw it in for me, okay? And so uh, what we're saying is that about 68% of the data, okay, is represented by this area in red. And so think of it this way, okay? Think of it this way, is that let's say that you had a pie chart, okay? And I went ahead and uh, colored, colored this in right here, okay? we know that that would be a quarter of the pi, 25%, okay? Basically, what we're doing here is think of that the area underneath this curve is kind of like a circle, that it has, it's 100%, because the entire area of the, of the circle is 100%, well, the area under this curve is all the data, it's 100%, okay? And what we're just saying is, how, how, what percentage did we just shade in underneath that curve? And what we just shaded in was 68%. Okay? So that's the first part of the empirical rule. So about 68% of the data is within one standard deviation, in this case, uh, between what? 66 and 74 for height. Uh, excuse me, 74. Okay? So that's the first part. Let's go to the second part. The second part says about 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So we're not going to just go out one standard deviation in both directions. We're going to go out two standard deviations in both directions. All right. So we'll start here. This is only going out one standard deviation in both directions. We still have to go out another standard deviation this way. And we have to go out another standard deviation this way, keeping in mind that the standard deviation is worth four units here. Alright, so if we went out four units this way, from 74, we would be at 78. How about this way over here? From 66 down to 62. Okay. So if we drew a line right here, and drew a line right here, okay. The alpha was actually on the line there. And then shaded all this in. There, I let the computer do that for me. What are we saying here? We're saying about 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. And for this particular problem, about 95% of the data is between what? 62 and 78. Okay? So notice I f when you f uh, I shaded in a lot computer shaded in a lot of this uh, this graph, right? How much of the graph? 95% of it. Okay. So that's the second part of the empirical rule. How about the third part? Third part says about 99.7%. I know it doesn't sound like an about. It sounds like awfully uh, specific, but truly this still is an about. So about 99.7% of the data is within what? Three standard deviations of the mean. So basically, the way the book presents it is that it doesn't even give this percentage. It says practically all of the data is within three standard deviations. Eh, okay. Let me give you an exact number, or more exact number, 99.7%. Okay. So 
uh, here, this was going out, let's see, one, two standard deviations that way, one, two standard, we still got to go out one more, right? So we got to go from here, 78, up to there. And I think that's going to take us to 82. And the same would hold true here. We have to go from 62 down to 58. Okay. So what we're saying is that, uh, mm, so notice, now, it looks like the whole graph is filled in. Actually, this graph keeps on going over here. And this graph keeps on going over here. Okay. Um, but there's just an itty bitty bitty amount of data out there. Okay. And so what we're saying is 99.7% of all males will have a height between what? 58 and 82. 95% uh, of all males will have a height between what? 62. And 78, and about 68% of all the males will have a height between what 66 and 74 inches. Okay. <clears throat> so the empirical rule: we find out that the mean and the standard deviation they they work nicely together. Okay. So let's go back to our our problem here. All right. And so what kind of problems could could we ask you on on the exam uh, and for homework? Um, and so we could ask you a couple of different questions. We could say, um, based upon this mean and this standard deviation, which will be given to you in the problem, we could say, uh, give us the interval, okay, or between, maybe we could say also, between what two points would the middle 68% of the data lie, okay? And so what I would do is I would memorize these percentages. That 68% is one standard deviation. 95% is two standard deviations. 99.7 is three standard deviations. I would go home, maybe you're already home, uh, but I would go ahead and memorize those. Okay. And so if we said uh, between what two values does the middle 68% of the data lie, and you go, okay, 68% is with one standard deviation from the mean. We know that the mean is 70, standard deviation is 4. So we got to go, let's see, one standard deviation both directions. So that must mean that 68% of the data lies between what, 66 and 74. And obviously we could say, you know, between what two values does the 95%, uh, middle 95% lie, and that would be 62 to 78 and so on. All right. All right, but we could also do the opposite. Okay, what do I mean by the opposite? We could say what percentage of the data lies between 66 and 74. All right, and then you would have to figure out, okay, well, that's within one standard deviation of the mean, and you would say what? 68%. Or what percentage of the data lies between 58 and 82? And you go, okay, how many standard deviations did we go out? <clears throat> we just went out three. So if you need to, in order to do the empirical rule, if you need to draw this graph really quick, all right, do it. Put the 70 in the middle, and then start going out standard deviation, okay, in both directions until you get to three. And you should be at the end of your graph then, okay, and you should be able to probably easily answer those questions then, okay. All right, so that ends uh, section 2.4. Thank you for your time.